but with stuff like RCK or with Twitter or Facebook, um, the tools of the API is there such that I can look at and we can actually start to get the past just the what the one point where they was worthy of sharing so we can look at you know these types of potential routes because of this. Um, and so I think you know the the, the part of thing raised is that there's a whole lot more noise to shout over, um, but it's a lot easier to come up with a sort of formulaic approach to well this is what goes viral, this is what gets a lot of like, very specific. So while uh, we're wrapping up there, I want to take uh, one more question. Hi guys, it's Brian. I'm from the Thanks for being here. Uh, I have a question on social media. Where the barrier to entry is so low, since anybody can say, we're all carrying around video games now. Especially if brand quality really has its own scalper to be effective. What we've seen today, you know, I know I've got something that spent an enormous amount of these beauty shot products, and yet we've got this hopefully viral nature of this video that's seen as something real, and it doesn't describe, it's not the man that's showing. So do you, do you think that is the nation thing right now, or is it still an area that's expanding all that mess of the essential quality brand into a social media device? I don't necessarily think things, you know, for a while, uh, just because they're actually commodities because they look authentic. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> more you look at like the Susan Boyle thing. I mean, that, that, that comes from a major show that you know, was huge. Um, I think when you start getting that, you know, um, crazy thing happening that shouldn't have happened, that, of course, if it looks like it's produced, you know, it's not that everyone is going to believe it, but if it's just something cool, crappy product, I don't think that's really adds anything to it. Um, I think it's a Worthy of looking at, even if it's real quick, it's still going to be you know, worthy of sharing. And the feedback you've got on the YouTube, and so what, what have you been seeing in terms of uh, production value? Is it the guys that are getting slick videos that are getting a lot of views of those people on the Amazon? Is it in between? Well, I think what we've seen is that um, the explosion of videos, especially from people who go on it, I don't think it's you know, God is really a way for like a full share of people on YouTube that actually want to like each other. We have very good distribution people and I think everybody's looking for different things. So, you know, some of them came online and what we just interested in more in their offer funnel than the rest of the people that because they just get a good test of it. But if they're not ready to have purchase, they might be looking at how it's involved, like how it's used to fund it, and looking for much more professionally created or even that product that you're looking for. So I think that it's not just on the product point, but the sheer volume that just everybody's looking for everything. And you can even think yourself that, you know, sometimes you're looking for that sitcom bit or a clip on the daily show for your, you know, comedy pick. And sometimes you're always looking for you to see the, the cup kids with you know, a background with a um, video camera taking something. And uh, I don't think that any specific viewer goes one way or the other. I think that's the beauty of YouTube is that if you go online and they do a search for something, especially with a broader topic, they look at that. They don't think that's really the production, professional content. And I do agree that giving it a little look at the of the really crappy quality, but it's really not. I think people might think. I was kind of like, if you compare it to those testimonials you see on the internet, like the one where it's like, oh, we have really worked with the HTML, well, it's great. Just because it's videotaped in the parking lot of the so it's going to be real. So, I think you can really find um, the, the balance of the triple or do both. I think you don't want it to be but if you're brand new, you are showing the clip. And the one thing I love always seeing is when they show the, the you know, the, the show, the, the TV show, and then they even show the, the outtakes, the bloopers, the after the show, the, I mean, the, even Fire Day is really cool where they show the, uh, uh, Jeff Stokes' walk direction, like the cast and how it's filmed. So it's one of the special parts, one of the, the other side of things. And that's a deal, but it's still, I mean, you get that good mix. And, you know, from the guy on the show, you want the most, I want the show you want the most. So, you know, I think, I think it's funny that, that I don't want to try to walk the most. So uh, we've got uh, one final thing for all the speakers, but um, before before we do that, I do want to go down the hall and um, in uh, two senses or less, where do you see this, this intersection of search engine marketing and social media in the next three to five years? So I have first. It's just everybody's going to be coming together, whether it's search, social media, it's all just going to be the side of the great for a long time. Um, Emergence of devices, of technologies, of, of location. Um, I think search will always have an important part in terms of people finding what it is that they're looking for at different points in their path. 
searches, uh, how we interact with search will change a lot, uh, how search engines themselves will work, because uh, what we're trying to search engines to do right now uh, is not what they're really going to be with, and they may be too involved, they are already going to be too involved with that. Uh, my apologies to Google, but Twitter search. Uh, I think there's that debate between when Google indexes it and 2024, 48 hours out, although they aren't really, really going to get any of this stuff, um, to what just happened five minutes ago. Uh, and I think it's in there clearly this problem. If you search for a hashtag on Twitter, you have no idea what it means. It's so just what people are talking about it. Um, but I think that real time socially curated search is huge. Well, I, I think launching off from that, I, I really think that the personal aspect of the search is probably uh, becoming more important. Um, just the idea that uh, the content has a greater layer of credibility because it's coming from a source that you know, uh, coming from uh, a group of people, a community that is like you're in some way next to it. I, I think that that works. Um, I think the system is the device is that once every year from your mobile phone or social media, you see you wherever you see, I think actually it's going to turn into, you know, it's going to watch TV, you can see you come up on your screen, you can see 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 you know, all that coming together, maybe you can see that that's what's going to happen. Whatever goes into the last two years, it's like you're going to be sick. Okay, so uh, I'd uh, just like to, actually, let's do the, uh, I don't know what the, uh,